No children were harmed in the making of this video. Hey, Dad, are you doing one of those videos again? Yeah, buddy. Why? What do you need? I have a headache. You have a headache? How bad is it? Really bad. Really bad? Yes. All right. Want me to cut it off or you want me to drill a hole? No! Come on, buddy. Let's do this. Come on. Mommy's doing it again. Thank you for joining me today on Mr. Dyer's Musings as we take a look at, well, instruments to work on the head. Thank you for joining me today. If you're new to our channel, check out the other videos that I got after you've watched this one. I got a ton of Civil War videos, early campcraft videos, early scouting videos. And in this channel, we take a look at artifacts and we examine them, we talk about them in its historical sense, we talk about its history, how they were used, things like that. So if that's something you're interested in, well, stay with me as we explore the Trophenian Kit. Now, if you started following my channel or maybe you went all the way back to one of my first videos that I started last year, we examined the surgeon's pocket kit. Now this is the kit that surgeons would carry on their persons all the time. In fact, Dr. Brenton even mentions it in his, his memoir when he was uh, riding his horse in a downpour and he got to camp and he was able to try to reach in for his instruments, the leather literally just melted away. It's something that you would always carry on your person. Something that we haven't taken a look at and we haven't personally examined is the capital amputation kit that I have here on my left. But I have a good friend who did a fantastic examination of the, uh, the capital kit and he did a comparison of the Mill Creek kit and that of the Archer kit. So I'll post a link to that. And in the future, I might delve into this a little bit more specifically about the uses of it and how the instruments were held and used uh, more specifically. But our focus is going to be on this kit. This kit is called a trephining kit or a trepanning kit. This surgery that was done uh, with these instruments is one of the oldest surgeries that was ever done. They found skulls that date back to prehistory that had the holes purposely cut into them. Now we don't know exactly why, maybe it was to release spirits, maybe it was uh, to relieve the pain uh, from a depression, maybe a person got injured, I don't know. There's, there's hundreds of reasons why it could have happened, but we do know that it's one of the oldest surgeries that was ever done by mankind. During the Civil War though, there weren't a whole lot of them done. There's about 200 of them that were done, that were documented. And out of those 200 cases, 70% led to death. So in my other video, we talked about the center mass. Um, the closer you are of getting hit and trying to do surgery to the center mass, well, the more likelihood that you're going to die. And if you were shot in the head or damaged in the head, there's a high, high probability that you are left to last because you're most likely going to die. And soldiers that may have got shot in the arm or the leg, they would have a higher chance of uh, surviving. So that's what surgeons are going to spend their time on. But in those cases where a surgeon decided to try to uh, uh, trepan, um, again, a, a, the expectation of life was pretty low. But we'd learned some things during the process. Now, we're going to take a look at these instruments one by one. And we're going to talk about the process of it. The reason why you would use this is in case there was a wound, usually though, like a blunt force trauma, uh, a depression, possibly if a patient was suffering from a lot of seizures. Even today, we still use trepanning to try to assist patients with those kinds of problems. So it is something that's still practiced today, but not in the same way. Um, and certainly with more advanced technology because the brain is very sensitive. There's a thin membrane between the skull and the brain itself and once that gets pierced it, it can be very dangerous. And that's what leads us into the process of the trepanning kit. So I have in this case and I, I want to give credit to my friend David 
he commissioned me to make this case for him and I asked him if I could do a video about these. So David, I really appreciate you letting me do this as we take a look at your instruments and discuss how they were used. The top one up here, that's what's called a scalpel. Right, we're pretty familiar with what scalpels are for. Now this is the trepanning drill. Now oftentimes in a trepanning kit, there would be two different sizes uh, and different types of handles were used. This is called the bone brush. I'll explain why. Now this is called a lifter. And again, we'll talk about why it's called a lifter. But often in other cases, you might find a bone rasp or a bone file like this to be used as double duty. But also just a simple lifter. And this next one is called a haze saw and it has a flat side with teeth and a rounded side for teeth. Okay, now let's talk about the procedure. What you're gonna do, if you notice something that's not in here, but a surgeon would use, you could possibly use the scalpel for this, but likely not. Since we're dealing with the skull, we have a lot of hair. So you would remove the hair with a razor and that would prepare the area for an incision to be made in the depressed area with the scalpel. Now the incision would be made, the flap would be removed, and lay bare would be the skull itself. At that point, you would take the trepan, and in it you have a point, and that's just to keep it centered to make sure you're not moving around. But you would drill into the skull like so and the teeth are angled in a cylindrical fashion. And once you drill in, you don't wanna to go too deep. And this is where it became a very delicate operation because you're only wanting to dig just so deep to uh, break through the bone. You don't want to hit that membrane. Once you drilled in, you would use the bone brush to brush away the dust. After that, you would use your lifter and you would lift the flap of the skull, a little cylindrical, it's about the size of a nickel. You'd lift that open and then you would allow it to drain. At this time in our American history, we didn't try to do in-depth invasive uh, brain surgeries. This just wasn't within our knowledge base. We didn't know what we were doing. Uh, the brain was still uh, being understood. In fact, in the late Victorian period, you had this whole idea of phrenology. So depending on how your skull was shaped would define what kind of person you are. It's kind of crazy, a little bit of quack medicine. Um, but phrenology was just starting in the American Civil War. But once you lift up the bone, you let it drain at that point, you would usually use a wet or damp compress and uh, to keep it, well, moist and heal. Now going back again, farther history, we know that trepanning was successful even before the American Civil War, even before the Egyptians, because we could see bone growth in these skulls. So was it possible to succeed? Yes, in fact, there's a movie called Master and Commander in that uh, they do a trepanning operation and they take a coin and they beat it flat and smooth and they use that to cover the hole of where the concussion of the depressed area was and the hole was removed. In the same situation as this, we're gonna to try to use uh, usually the piece of bone that was removed. We would try to keep that and we would, as it heals, put the flap back over um, and again, just watch. Most times though, 70% chance of fatality. Now the hay saw, in place of the trepan itself, say you needed to make, instead of a circular cut, you could use the flat to make more of a uh, square or rectangle cut, maybe an area that's much larger than the trepan itself. And same thing with the rounded part, you would kind of go back and forth like so, and you could work your way around it.
So that's the point of the Haysaw. And that's really it. Like, that's what the operation was. That's what the tools were used for. Again, most surgeons never attempted to do the trepanning operation um, out of 200 cases during the American Civil War, 70% were, were fatal. So uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. If you liked the video, if you found it useful, please like, please consider subscribing, share the video with others, especially if those people that like antiques or they like artifacts, because that's what this channel is about, to examine these artifacts and give you a little bit more knowledge. And, you know, it's interesting. It's what helps me connect with history. I'm hoping that it helps you connect with history as well. I want to thank my patrons on Patreon. If that's something you'd be interested in supporting our channel, please go to my Patreon page, Mr. Dyer's Musings, and uh, anything you contribute, even if it's a dollar, 50 cents, whatever, it's appreciated. And that's what we're going to use this summer as we go around the state of Ohio to visit various historic sites and talk to other historical professionals. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful week. Give a kiss and a hug to your loved ones, and take care.